In this video, we'll introduce the I3C communication protocol and give a high-level overview of what it is and how it works. I3C is a new serial communication protocol developed by the MIPI Alliance. It offers a much higher clock speed than I2C, while also supporting many new features and options for developers. Like I2C, I3C can be implemented as a two-wire bus although there are notable electrical changes between the buses. Since I3C has a similar structure to I2C, it can operate in a legacy mode with I2C targets. The most significant difference between I2C and I3C is bus speed. I2C is usually run at 100 kHz, 400 kHz, or 1 MHz, whereas I3C can reach clock speeds of up to 12.5 MHz. This increase in speed is primarily due to the use of push-pull output drivers in I3C implementations. Depending on the bus state, I3C switches between open drain and push-pull drivers. Open drain mode is used during initial addressing or arbitration, where multiple targets may assert at the same time. Push-pull mode is used when communication is unidirectional, meaning when only one device is communicating at a time. Unlike I2C, I3C does not require external pull-up resistors. These resistors are provided by the main controller on the bus. Another difference between the protocols is the operating voltage. I2C can be used across a wide operating range. Although 3.3 volt and 5 volt operation are the most common, 1.8 and other voltage levels are sometimes used in I2C implementations. While I3C allows the use of other operating voltages, it is primarily intended to be used at low operating voltages. The specification targets 1.2, 1.8, and 3.3 volt operation. Next, let's look at how addressing works in I3C. I2C can support 7-bit and 10-bit addressing of target devices. I3C only supports 7-bit addressing. However, I3C uses dynamic addressing, which means that the current controller assigns the target addresses to prevent address collisions. Developers using I2C must keep track of the addresses being used to prevent two devices from sharing the same address. Dynamic addressing of targets happens during bus initialization. The assigned address plays a role in prioritization during arbitration or in-band interrupts. I2C requires using an extra I.O. line to enable a target to notify the controllers that data is ready. I3C allows the target device to use the SDA and SCL lines to signal an interrupt. This type of in-band signaling can be used to implement hot join functionality in I3C. Another major change in I3C is the number of active controllers allowed. I2C can support multi-controller buses, where multiple devices can operate in a controller role mode, but only one can actively communicate at a time. I3C only allows one device to be in the controller role on a bus. However, secondary devices may request to become the active controller. To begin serial communication on I3C, the 7-bit dynamic address is sent by the controller, followed by an ACK or NAC from the target. During data transfer, I3C uses 9-bit serial transfers like I2C does. But the function of the 9th bit has been changed from ACK NAC to a transition bit or T-bit. The T-bit has two functions. When the controller is writing to a target, the T-bit is an odd parity bit of the data byte sent. When a controller is reading from a target, the T-bit is used as an end of data flag. The controller or the target can assert the T-bit to indicate that the transfer is done or no more data remains. Since I3C is very similarly structured to I2C, it can operate in a legacy mode for I2C targets in certain scenarios. Any I2C targets on the bus must use 7-bit addressing without clock stretching. It is recommended that I2C targets also contain 50 nanosecond input filters 
to filter out I3C traffic. Another crucial change with I3C is that clock stretching is typically not used. I2C uses clock stretching to give target devices more time to process before returning data. With I3C, the clock is only driven by the active controller. This means that clock stretching can only be performed by the controller under specific conditions. However, the target device can indicate speed restrictions during the dynamic addressing process to inform the controller of maximum clock speed and other parameters. Common command codes, or CCCs, are significant new features in I3C. Every CCC begins with address 7H7E. All I3C devices must acknowledge this address. CCCs can be broadcast to every target or be directed at a specific one. There are too many CCCs to cover in this video, but here are some of the important ones. Enter dynamic address assignment. Set new dynamic address assignment. Reset dynamic address assignment. Get set max read length. Get set max write length. Get device characteristics register. Get bus characteristics register. Target reset action. As well as enter high data rate mode. Another feature built into I3C is called high data rate mode or HDR for short. HDR is entered by the host transmitting one of the four HDR CCCs. I3C has these four HDR modes. HDR Ternary Symbol Pure Bus, HDR Ternary Symbol Legacy Inclusive Bus, HDR Double Data Rate, and HDR Bulk Transport, HDR BT. The clock rate doesn't change while in HDR mode but the way data is encoded does change. In HDR-TSP and HDR-TSL modes, data is transmitted in ternary with three defined symbols created from the SDA and SEL lines. The choice between HDR-TSP and HDR-TSL is based on whether an I2C target is present. HDR-TSP can only be used when I3C targets are present, whereas HDR-TSL is used when a legacy I2C target is present. HDR-DDR is a mode that uses both edges of the clock to transmit data. This significantly increases the data rate of the bus, although it does not double the data throughput because of extra overhead in the protocol. Finally, there is HDRBT. Because it uses multiple data lines at the same time for more parallelism, HDRBT has the highest data throughput of any HDR mode. For bus compatibility, only the least significant bit or LSB of the SDA line is used for normal single data rate communication. HDRBT supports dual and quad line configurations. HDR is not required for basic I3C communication. Devices that do not support HDR ignore communication until they detect the HDR exit pattern. Finally, let's discuss in-band interrupts and address arbitration. Unlike I2C, targets can generate the start condition for in-band interrupts. However, targets do not have control of the clock. The active controller must detect the start condition from the target and then provide a clock signal. If two targets attempt to communicate at the same time, addressing arbitration will occur. Arbitration determines which target is allowed to communicate with the controller. To describe how this process works, let's show an example. Two targets, A and B, would like to talk to the active controller at the same time. Target A has an address of 7H10, and Target B has an address of 7H14. Both devices generate an in-band interrupt at the same time, and will attempt to send their dynamic address to the controller. In the initial addressing stage, the bus is open drain. Open drain communication allows multiple devices to send data at the same time, 
by only allowing the zero to be actively asserted. Ones need to be passively generated by a pull-up resistor on the bus. The winning address in arbitration is the one that the controller receives. To start, let's transmit the common parts of the address, 0010. Since the values match, neither device has won or lost. But, at the next bit, device A will assert 0, while device B will passively send 1. In this scenario, the controller sees the actively asserted 0, not the 1. Having lost arbitration, device B automatically yields and stops transmitting. As a rule, the lower the address is, the higher the priority in I3C during arbitration. This concludes our introduction to I3C. We encourage you to visit the MIPI Alliance homepage and download the latest version of the specification to learn more about this protocol. Use the link that we have provided in the video description. As always, please like and subscribe for more content.